<laughs> Far away. G'day and welcome back to Downs' Diary. We're on week nine. Uh, this week I'll be talking, uh, doing an update on my injury and how that's going, just to keep people in the loop uh, as to how it's progressing. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of media work lately, so I'm going to talk just a little bit about that. The main thing this week I'm going to talk about is obviously something I can't overlook is uh, how big a weekend it's going to be for Cheltenham Town Football Club and what a significant milestone it potentially could be. So uh, a bit on that. And then we've got our player profiles this week. Uh, we've got Jordan Cranston, Rob Dickey, Reese Lovett and James Dayton. So there's a few interesting uh, things to uh, speak about them. So should be good. Okay. <coughs> uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, my injury update. Uh, it's coming along really well. Uh, I'm very happy with how things are progressing. I'm just over uh, 11 weeks, so getting close to three months now. And at the three month period, if everything is okay, you're allowed to, to move on and start running. So I'm, I'm getting closer uh, every day. We're sort of planning. We've targeted Monday um, to start running, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, I've been doing a lot of work on the, uh, the Alter G, which is the anti gravity treadmill, which is absolute gold dust uh, for me. It allows me to lower my body weight to a percentage, uh, and then and then run at that percentage. So I started out at forty percent, which was really low. It was like being on the moon. It's it's hardly any impact at all. Um, just walking and that was sort of at six weeks the uh, period so to be able to get on and do a little bit of walking and running at six seven weeks from an ACL is is an amazing uh, piece of equipment to have um, and we've progressed that each week move on and uh, this week I've I went from 65 percent up to 85 percent and like today I did 80 85 percent I did an hour uh, running so to be able to do an hour's running at the stage I'm at it is, you know, like I say, the, the, the equipment is just gold dust for me. It's really good and, you know, we're really appreciative of uh, Nuffield Health in Cheltenham for, for allowing us to have that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Also, what else I've been doing is a lot of swimming, a lot of weights, um, leg weights uh, work, uh, and then uh, a lot of cycling. I don't know if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, but uh, when the boys went up, the the uh, I took my bike up with me and I did a lot of uh, I, I went out on my bike up in the Yorkshire Dales, which was amazing. I was out quite early actually. I was out about six thirty, quarter to seven, and did a just over an hour and a half, hour forty minutes, I think I did, and uh, it was it was brilliant to get out. That the the, the uh, scenery was amazing and set me up for the day really. So things like that, I'm just keeping myself ticking over and. It's coming along really well. Uh, the physio Gav's been brilliant with me. He's 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 testing me, which is brilliant, which I need as a person. I need to be tested, and he he understands footballs, which is great. And every now and then he joins in and does a session with you, which is great motivation. And you know he, he's been really he's he has been brilliant, and he's so he's knowledgeable. He's very good at his job. Uh, one of the best physios I've worked with. He he, he knows. And each day you come in and he's got a, a different program, keeps keeps things quite lively and, and you know tries to keep you motivated as best as possible and uh, absolute pleasure to work with and uh, I'm really appreciative of, of the effort and the support that he's given me um, as well as the rest of the the staff that have been brewing with me. They're always asking me and keeping me in the loop with things and obviously I go to most away games as well so I'm st still in with the boys so it's um, it's come along really well. And we're hoping for, you know, we, we don't want to sort of set a, a, a date on it, but we're hoping for pre-season to be back in training and and hopefully get a full pre-season on my belt and then look to, to join in with uh, full-on training, you know, the back end of pre-season and, and maybe get one or two pre-season games in and, and go from there, really. So that's sort of where I'm at at the minute. Um, it will be a busy summer for me. I won't get as... <laughs> Many holidays as most of the other lads, but I'll get a little bit of time away, and then. Uh, but the summer will be quite busy with uh, with rehab. <clears throat> also, while I've been injured, uh, I've been trying to keep myself um, busy with with other things outside of football. Football's taken up a lot of time 
for me because when you're injured you, you tend to spend more time at the training ground than people think they think when you're injured you, you don't do as much but you actually do probably double if not you know three times more you're in every day you don't have Wednesdays off like uh, some people do like the the other rest of the team do so you are a lot busier but your nights aren't as busy whereas with the football you, you kind of got to rest up concentrate on the game and stay focused but for me night time has given me a, a chance to uh, go and watch football matches um, but what I've been doing a little bit more of is, is the media work media side of things and obviously this <laughs> is uh, one of them uh, projects that I've been able to do and I'm really grateful for it and uh, I hope people are enjoying it but obviously I've done a little bit of work for, for BT as well which has been a great uh, insight and I'm hoping I might do a little bit more for them uh, this week I was fortunate enough to do a little bit of work for the BBC Points West they, they wanted me to interview a few people and I got to interview the gaffer and the chairman which was a bit different being on the other side and, and, and asking the questions and I was desperate to say to the gaffer, come on gaffer, you give me a two year deal or what, but <laughs> I didn't want to hear the answer, so I didn't ask. Uh, but um, so yeah, so doing a little bit of work like that, I've, I've got a degree in sports journalism, so the media side does interest me. It is harder to get into being a, a lower league footballer. Generally, the, the top paid jobs go to the, the ex-Premier League players, really, the, that people know. Uh, and and can and recognise, so it is tougher to get into. Uh, but by having the degree behind me, it gives me, you know, a stepping stone, and, and and it's something for the future. And if I don't take it into media, then it might give me an option to do something else at university. Give me some points to earn a, for another, maybe do another degree, or or get me foot in the door somewhere else, and 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 learn another. Um, go back to school and do something else so uh, having that is giving me that option and, and the, the while I'm injured doing the, the little bit of extracurricular media work is I'm really enjoying it and, and it's been beneficial and like I say I appreciate the uh, Gloucester Echo for, for having me on board each week and you know, I'm really enjoying it and like I say footballers need to plan for their future and it's something that I'm planning for. Were you able to get a better answer out of Harry Pell than I am? Yes, I think he opens up a little bit more to me, but as soon as I chuck a camera in his face, he sort of he gets a little bit serious and he's... Serious? He, yeah, a little bit more serious. I, I, I interviewed him on the, 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 the uh, BBC thing and he was laughing about joking and then the camera came in and all of a sudden he went... Well, I, it was like uh, Zoolander, he went to, his, went to his pose, his model pose. So, uh, <laughs> But yeah, so good old Pelly. Um, Right. Okay. <laughs> he's the most interesting person I've ever had to interview. He's ever. brewing, isn't he? He's like, he's like a kid on a sugar rush. He is. Especially Absolutely. after the Grimsby game when he came out and said, I couldn't see. Yeah, I just, <laughs> saw, I just the saw the roar. <laughs> you don't see the roar, you hear it. <laughs> it's now on its light, I just saw the roar. I saw the roar. <laughs> I don't think you'd seen it, mate. I think you heard it. <laughs> Uh, I can't do Downs' diary this week without stating the obvious. Uh, what a massive weekend potentially it could be for Cheltenham Town Football Club, uh, for us players, for the staff, for everyone involved. It, it potentially could be a massive weekend. You know, we've worked so hard this season, and to get into this situation is you know, with three games to go. Well, two after this, but with three games to go, to be in this situation is. We had that in our minds, but we, you know, it it's really is like a dream come true at the minute. Uh, but the main thing this week is to to try and stay focused and stay calm and get the job done. As as much as the uh, the result, if we win, will give us the promotion that we've all craved and we all want, and you know, we just it'll be amazing. For it to happen but we're not there yet you know and I think that's sort of the the key message this week that we've tried to get try to get across to each other is that it's one last push the, the managers put it down as a cup final and we all know in a cup final anyone can be anyone <laughs> cliche 
but it is true and we need to make sure we stay focused uh, stay organised, stay, uh, you know, don't let the occasion of the game get the better of us. And if we can come through this game successful, regardless of what happens down the road, we know that we're, we're going to get promoted and, and we're going to achieve the goal that we set out at the start of the season. And, and you know, the, to reach a goal that you set out for such a long-term goal to be achieved is an amazing feeling, you know, and we have that uh, motivation to have that feeling and it will be amazing, but like I say, we've just got to make sure that we stay focused, stay grounded, do our job, be professional as much as we can, try not to get too carried away and, and then we can all write our names in the history books and, uh, and be heroes you know there's to bounce back as champions um, at the first attempt there's only two teams that have done that in history I think uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure I've got on a reliable source that it's only <laughs> two times and it's been 26 seasons since it's happened there's been teams that have bounced back through the playoffs but to bounce back as champions from being relegated from one season to the other it's, it's an amazing achievement and we mustn't let that sort of bit of pressure, I suppose, get to us. And every time we've been asked questions this season, we've come up trumps. And I don't doubt for a minute that the boys uh, are able and capable of doing it. We just need to make sure that we are calm, make the right decisions under pressure, and then we can, we can uh, all enjoy, enjoy the celebrations and enjoy, you know, the, what comes with the promotion. I've been speaking to a few of the boys this week about, and the manager had a meeting with them about two or three weeks ago as well, what, what promotion would mean to them. <clears throat> and there were some quite emotional responses. You know, it, it, everyone's laughing and joking and we're in a really good uh, state of mind at the minute as, as a club and, and as, as a team. Everyone's positive and upbeat, and when I started speaking to one or two of them, you know, you could you could tell the emotion in in their voice, and it sort of almost went serious, and and it really means a lot to the boys. So there's, I know for a fact there is so much motivation within the boys personally and as a team. Each individual wants to get promoted for their own personal reasons. But they also, every t every, when I asked them, they all had an answer like, I want to do it for that person in the squad for this reason. I want to do it for that person because of this. You know, they all want to do it for their mate as much as they want to do it for themselves. And that just sums up this squad's mentality and camaraderie. It, it, it's priceless. It's, like I've said before, it's something I've never uh, been involved in so passionate before and it's an absolute privilege to be amongst the boys and <clears throat> I know for a fact they're going into the game not lacking motivation they're hungrier than ever for this they're not going to show up on Saturday and just go out and expect to win and just expect to roll them over they're, they want to go and, and thump them you know mm -hmm. and I, I wish I could be there and, and, and enjoy it with them but I know the motivation's there from the boys and like I say, it's, you know, it's just a case of keeping them grounded and then hopefully all that motivation we can get from them for the weekend. It's almost letting, letting the beast off a lead you know, and letting them go. It's trying to just keep them calm for the minute and then once they release, go, do the job Saturday and then we can, we can all enjoy it. And uh, you know, it's going to be hopefully amazing scenes on Saturday. I know there's going to be a big crowd there um, and there's you know, potential to be great celebration so I just hope the well I'm confident the boys can do it and then we can uh, go from there the, the mathematics don't worry you the, the, the fact that Forest Green could in theory overturn the, uh, well, the, the goal difference if you both win I trust the manager <laughs> and he's come out this week and he said if we win Saturday he's going to celebrate and if the manager says that's okay <laughs> okay with me I'm going to celebrate like I've never celebrated before <laughs> if we win it will be highly unlikely that 
the goal difference could be tur turned around and as long as we do our job then you don't know what happens up the road if if they win then they win and it's six points with six points to play and as it stands I think it's 24 yeah. goal difference uh, so you know, is that going to get turned over I can't, I can't see that I think there'll be inquiries if it is. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're all going to celebrate, and rightly so, because you're pretty much over the line then, aren't you? So it might not be a big P next to the name, but... Big C. It, uh, it big C, you're exactly <laughs> right. Apologies, big C. Uh, how good will that be? So, um, yeah, we will, we will definitely celebrate if we win Saturday, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, that covered it. The fitness drive will be off for one day, will it? Hey, fitness drive will be off for one day. <laughs> yeah, a couple of oh, beers oh, on Saturday night. Yeah, I think there'll be a few beers in that bar Saturday night. Oh, that's for sure. Definitely. <coughs> I think I'll uh, miss spinning on Sunday, darling. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to. If, if, got, it's, got... if it's all sorted out on Saturday, we'll have to be in the office Sunday. And I said, I said, because uh, I can remember going in '99 when Jordan won the league. Yeah, and um, Mark, who was head of sport back then um, went straight from the bar to work oh. <laughs> the, he interviewed Steve Cottrell in the toilet at 5am did he? Yeah. Oh, he didn't want, I don't think that that uh, interview wanted to get in no. yeah. <laughs> we got promoted <coughs> I'll tell this story so tell her. when we got promoted at Chesterfield uh, she had to go into work the next day after we had one of the player of the year awards it was a Sunday mm. night and we were out celebrating and all that. And Shell went home a bit earlier and I said, oh, I'm going to stop out for a few hours. She said, yeah, yeah, no worries. I'll see you when you get home kind of thing. Expecting me to get home for two in the morning, yeah. three in the morning, something like that. In with the milk, were you? And <laughs> we're in that hotel where we were, where we were having like celebrating. It was right across from the ground. Stayed in Cheltenham Town and Shell worked yeah. in the club shop. And I remember I was sitting there with Sheridan and I was sitting there with Shez and Shez goes, you want another beer, Dan? He went, ah, why not, Shez? <laughs> it's often you get... Promoter said, so I just did the toilet though. He said, All right, no worries. It was only me and Shez left. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to the toilet and I looked at it. But where we were sat, you, it was yeah. like dark, you know, not dark, but yeah. it was the you know, same lights as this. And I walked, and it was Prime daylight, yeah. proper daylight. I'm like, It's like the old oh and horses like, when they come out and they can see that. Looked at my phone, it was like five past nine. <laughs> Shell was at work. So I went, oh shit. I ran over the road. I opened the. <coughs> I walked into the club shop. She went, home. Yeah. <laughs> she gave me the biggest devils. I went, I'm so sorry, babe. I'm so sorry. I says, I've been with Shell. I've been with the manager. Yeah. I've been with the manager. He's kept me there. And she was like, home. Well, oh, I was in the doghouse. Well done. That's yeah. Good it, was, it was like nine o'clock in the morning. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> But yeah, Sunday we might miss spinning. She had me spinning on Sunday. Yeah, she's motivated to get me back in there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up, we've got our player profiles. I'm starting off with Jordan Cranston. Uh, Jordan had a baptism of fire when he first came in. I'm sure you've all heard the story. I've said it a few times that uh, he'd come in, bless him, and he didn't have a t front tooth for the first two weeks. And uh, he, he, he uh, certainly was known that he didn't have a front tooth he knew about it and uh, he soon got that fixed bless him but uh, you know he's, he's come in and he's, he's slotted in really well uh, we've, uh, we've we've had we've talked about uh, players coming in halfway through a season and and how hard it is for them to adapt and you you don't realize the pressure that they're actually under Jordan's come from Gateshead and he's coming to a, you know a team top of the league with expectations from the outside you'd look in and go oh that's a great move for him he's gone from a, a team mid-table to the top of the league he must be buzzing but he's also got to think I'm going in there they're top league I don't want to let them down I don't want to be the one that's coming halfway through the season and, and cost them promotion so he's under a lot, a lot of pressure and, and he's dealt with it tremendously and there's been a few lads uh, that have done that, especially some of the lone boys of uh, of late have come in halfway through the season and and had to add them 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 pressures and, and they've dealt with it. And uh, Jordan's come in and we obviously when we played against Gateshead we knew the quality because of the free kick he scored against and the game he had he had a really good game and obviously that that free kick was uh, you know really good and 
Dill's one too happy when he's when the gaffer's on him. <laughs> you know, I don't think he conceded a free kick all season. And the, the first one he did, the gaffer went and saw on the player that bloody did it. So, you know, hats off to Dill's because uh, no one's scoring against him. But when they do, the gaffer signs them. But uh, no, like I say, we knew his quality coming in. Uh, it gave us uh, a little bit more balance to the squad because we, we were a bit short on left footers. We had uh, me and Paz sort of sharing the left side centre half. Paz played most of the time left side centre half. Uh, and we only had George really as a, a left sided player and so I think that that left foot was uh, w- was needed at the back that is obviously we've got dates but um, and it you know it added competition and f- for George and I think Simon and Jordan Cranston has, has pushed George to a new level and you you know and both of them being sort of in and out and and vying for that spot, and every time one of them's played, they've they've performed admirably, you know, really well, and you know it's it was tough on George when George the gaff signed Jordan because obviously he thought oh, am I, is that it? Am I going to be pushed aside? But it, like I say, both of them have got such a great attitude, uh, and credit to Jordan Cranston, you know, when when the gaff signed him, I'm sure he thought he might just come in and start playing, but he's had to work and get his spot, and then. Then George has come back in, and you know they're vice and versa, and um, they've done they've done really well, uh, both of them. And, uh, and I think Jordan has added that little bit of quality that you need to add halfway through a season uh, uh, to, to sort of to see to kick you on to a to a new level. And he's done that. He's he's been absolutely brilliant for us, Jordan. And uh, I think he's he's been a really strong addition to the squad. And we were, we were grateful. We were, you know, we were grateful to have him, and we were glad when the gaffer signed him. I think he was a good bit of business, and uh, you know, a, another great lad. He's fitted in so well around the changing room. He gets on with with all the boys really well. Uh, he's, you know, he, he takes stick really well from from certain people like Pelly yeah. and Stoz. But um, no, he, like I say, he's, you can go one way or the other when the boys start giving you stick and. You know he's really he's embraced it and he's took it and he's 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 got such a laid back character he's, he's you know he's quite relaxed and both our left backs are like that aren't they really George is like I've said before so any more laid back he'll fall over bless him and so um, George another one he's he's you know got a really good mentality and and you know he's he's been a good uh, a good addition to the squad and you know, glad glad we've got him definitely. Next up, we've got Rob Dickey, uh, who's uh, we're lucky to have just got back, um, but he's been he's been brilliant this season, uh, Rob Dickey. I've got such high praise and such high expectations for him going forward as well. But he's been he's been really good for us. His quality on the ball is is good. He's he's a big un. You know, he's good in the air. When he first came, he was he won great in the air, but he's worked on that. Um, me and the gaffer have done a little bit of work with him and on heading and you know we can just go to show now it's paid off because he's he's great in the air he's he's got a great physique and 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 uh, you know athleticism um, and I think when he came in he was sort of thinking of coming in as a centre half but he's he's been brewing it right back and he's 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 done a great job and before he got injured he was a massive player for us and a, and a key member of the squad and. You know, there's not many centre half slash right back score hat tricks, and he, you know to get himself a hat trick and uh, you know is, is is a great achievement. I remember when he, he'd only been here probably a week, and he in training he was brilliant. He was very good, and I was speaking to Gaffer. Going, You've got to play here, Gaffer. You know, he's very good. And Gaffer was speaking highly of him, and then uh, you know one day in training, Stoz is, he scored a, an amazing goal, and he's like Stoz shouts, "That boy will play for England." <laughs> <Like> <laughs> And Stoz is he's adamant he's going to play for England, so he's got high expectations uh, to live up to, Dickie, for <laughs> Stoz anyways. But, um, but yeah, he's, like I say, he's, he's got great ability. And his injury was a blow to us. Uh, another uh, iceberg, as the, the manager says, that we've had to deviate around. And he's, he's always been in contact with the boys and... and He's a lone player, but I mean, he's he's gone on camera to say that 
I feel like a Cheltenham player, not a Reading player, and and that that speaks volumes about the the bloke. You know, he's really embraced his move and his loan move and his his willingness to to travel to away games and watch the boys play when he doesn't have to on a Tuesday night. He was at Eastleigh. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's 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 travelled to a, a fair few home games on on Saturday home games, and he's been to ninety percent of the games that he's not been able to go to through his injury. Uh, he's come in support of the boys in, in the change room, wishing us all the best, afterwards celebrating with us. You know, he's you know, same as Dylan Phillips. They, they've they've really embraced they feel they don't feel like lone players, they feel like um, our players and they've taken uh, they've taken to us and the boys are really taking to them and you know, a lot a lot of lone players can come in and sort of not have that desire because they know at the end of they're loan. They're going back. They're not bothered what happens. They're there just to sort of get what they can out of it and then move on. But every one of the players that have come in on loan have just really taken to what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, and you know the manager wouldn't allow it any other way because he's he sent a few people back because they've not you know come up to our standard. But the boys who have stayed on for longer term just goes to show that they've come up to our standards and and excelled even, and Rob Dick is one of them, he's, he's really has excelled, he's been a massive member, he's, he's, a, he's quite a quiet person, a lovely kid, really grounded and genuine guy, you can have a proper conversation with, he's, uh, he's respectful, you know, he's been brought up right, a, another one, another good bloke, <laughs> and uh, you know, he's, he really is a, a great to have in our squad, and I've got so much, I've said, uh, I said it just before. Expectation for him, he he can play at the highest level. I'm I'm I'll be very surprised if he's not in the Reading's first team anytime soon. Although we'd like to have him back next season uh, and uh, help us, you know, uh, fight out hopefully in uh, in the league because uh, he'll be a great addition if we can get him back. And he's he's been a real coup for the club. And uh, you know we missed him when he wasn't here, but now he's come back. You know what I'm you know. What an impact he's had! He, he come back and the gaffer really give it, got into him at half time. And as a young lad, this is a Geisley, sorry, and a, a young lad, the manager really got into it, got stuck into him at half time, and and he could go one or two ways. He can go under, or he can come out fight, and then he he come out and th- threw a few beauty punches because he's got that goal. Great header, beat his player straight in the middle of the goal. Powerful header, which he's done a few times this year, and then. Goes on a mazy run, sets up the home and goal, which really just put a nail in, in, in the, the the game coffin and uh, sealed the points for us. Really, so you know, to come out and have that kind of second half. I mean, I didn't think he had that bad a first half. The manager might think differently, but <laughs> you know, he, he uh, it just shows the character of the guy. He's he's got he's got men's shoulders. You know, he's he's got he's got great potential in the game, and yeah, really good the table to the season. Yeah, I think he's getting better at that today. He uh, uh, he's getting better. He's come back, uh, picked it up, and he's he's doing okay. He's, I think he's still in the top three, definitely. Yeah. But uh, like I say, I don't play the table tennis. He's not very good at darts. So. <laughs> That's <the> main thing. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Reese Lovett, our very own Reese. We love Reese. He's uh, might not be as known to many people because he's not played uh, well. He's not played a game this season for us, but he's been at every single game. Uh, our uh, goalkeeper Reese, he's he's a lovely kid. Bless him. He's as thick as two short planks. He's uh, he's 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 definitely got a a different uh, view on the world to most of us. He's he's a quiet. When he first came in, he'd not said boot or goose to anyone for about a month, and we thought, you know, the kid doesn't say anything, and we're always like, come on, Reese, you got something for us, and. Nothing. Never, didn't really get much out of him, and then he started car schooling with Stoz, Ace, and Jordan Cranston, and then all of a sudden, we started to realise why he wasn't speaking. Bless him, because the things that come out of his mouth are just brilliant. They they're priceless at times. He he's, he's he's he must have had a sheltered upbringing because he's he he doesn't know much in, much in the world. <laughs> he's a lovely kid, really lovely kid. He's got a lot of respect. Every time you speak to him, he's he's always polite. He's always quick to respond, and you know, and and you know, he's always asked how you are, and he'll say good morning to you. And 
you know, so he's he's a lovely kid. He's got good manners, and like I say, he's 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 not a weirdo. You know, he's just uh, he's like I say, got a, a warped view on the world at times. He's <laughs> I I did a, one of the first I did the first quiz on the bus on the way trip down to Torquay, and then the next one because I'd done the first quiz, everyone had picked their partners, so I just basically got lumped with whoever didn't have a partner. And Reese, I think. He wasn't on the the, the Torquay trip, maybe, and then so me and him had to go together. So I was the next uh, quiz. I was uh, partnered with Reese to do the quiz. Question had come out. I'm like, Reese, do you know? I don't know, Downsy. <laughs> all right, mate. No worries. I'll put the answer down. Next question, Reese, do you know? I don't know, Downsy. He said there must have been seventy <laughs> questions. I think sixty nine questions. He said to me, I don't know, Downsy. <laughs> And I, I can't remember the one he knew. I think he got that wrong. Bless him. He's uh, he, he, <laughs> it was hard, it was hard work. Bless him. But um, oh, I must tell the story. Stoll's come in and told us the other day that Reese. They were uh, it, it was do, they they play like uh, little games in the car on the way home. And and anyway, Stoll's uh, said to Reese, Reese, I'm going to ask you a question. Just tell me what you think the answer is. He goes. My uncle the other week, he uh, he bought a bungalow, and it was blue. Um, it had a blue roof, blue walls, blue windows, blue carpets. What colour do you think the stairs were, Reese? Uh, blue. Right, I'll ask you again, Reese. <laughs> My uncle bought a bungalow. Uh, this time it was yellow. A yellow roof, yellow walls, yellow windows. Everything was yellow on it. What colour do you think the stairs were? Uh, yellow must have went on seven times seven different colours and he's and then he's like still every time said the colour stairs were that colour green orange you know purple all this got to he goes right Reese, white and he goes oh I've got it I've got it ask me he goes alright uncle bought a white bungalow white roof right everything like that. he goes what colour were the stairs they were wooden like that <laughs> he didn't get the Bungalows don't have stairs. <laughs> he kept going on and kept saying about the bungalow and the stairs. Bless him. That just sums him up. So uh, I can tell you hundreds of stories about Reese like that. But yeah, just genuine, lovely kid. And uh, you know, we he, he get off. You know, him, <laughs> his personality. And uh, as a footballer, he's uh, you know he, he's been brought up around because he you know he's he never 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 argues, never complains. Gets out. He's always one of the first on, first, last off at training. The gaffer's uh, said he's like a gymnast, and he is. He's got such great athleticism. He's he's springy, so springy, and jumping about all the time in goal. And uh, you know, he's just he's a great great to have around the place. And uh, you know, I think uh, you know we're lucky to have him around because he's he's he's, he's provided us with endless entertainment over the uh, over the course of the season. And uh, you know, he, it's been hard for him not to be able to be playing, but he just he he loves being around the boy. He loves coming into training, and you know, he's, you know, he's he's a good he is a good kid, and you know, we, we really do like him. We do love him. We love you, Reese. Uh, next up, we've got uh, James Dayton. Good old Dates. Um, you know, an, another one that didn't do pre-season with us, but come in. Uh, I think we've been a month or two months into the season, and. Uh, it's, we, were, we were very lucky to have someone of his calibre join us and have the season with him. He only came in on a short-term contract, uh, which was soon extended to the end of the season. And uh, you know, we were really glad that the, the manager kept him on because he's he's given us something different. Dates has to to what we had provided us with a, a genuine threat and an outlet, a genuine out-and-out winger with real quality. He's He's, he can change a game, you know, with with his ability, and he's got great feet. He's he's nippy. He's he's so good at keeping the ball away from the defender, wherever the defender is. He knows where he is, and he just moves it to the side and keeps it sort of just a, away from the defender, and entices him in to a tackle or a foul. And when you you know when you're sort of eighty five minutes and onwards, and you're winning the game, and you give him the ball, and he goes goes running on and like I say just draws a foul and it nicks you three or four minutes it's priceless things like that and he's, he's brewing a waste of time days he's one of the best we got subbed the other week I can't remember who we were playing and we, I think we were one or two nil up and uh, 
he's seen his number come up on the board. And when his number went up, we all looked around, where's Dates? He was about, he was as far away as he could. He was on the corner flag down the other end of the pitch. And he turns around, oh, oh me, like that. And, and the ball's down the other end. And he's, he's, he's gone walking, he knew. And he's like, oh, right, yeah, I'll come over. And then he undoes his shoelaces and pulls his pads out and takes him about four minutes to get over. The other week, when we played Grimsby, the ball went out. We, and they'd been wasting time all game, I think. And then we obviously were winning and the ball went and it went under this fella's legs in the stand and Dace just stood there chatting to the bloke <laughs> the ball was just stood there and Dace like saying to the ref I can't find the ball and it's underneath the bloke sat down and he's just chatting to the lad like ah, he must have wasted 30 or 40 seconds doing that and the ref's come over and like the ball's just there he goes oh, oh it's just there like, oh no problem yeah sorry sorry like ah, he's <laughs> he's priceless Dace and that sums him up he's he's, he's uh, personality he's you got such a cheeky sense of humour, Dates. He's, he's, you can add into the group with with Pelly and Stoz and Rowie. The, you've got to be careful when you're around them. You, you've always got to be mindful. With, you know, you, you don't want to put your phone just on the table because next thing you know, he's, you know, he's ringing someone or he's, you know, he's taking like ten thousand photos, just snapping away, or, he's, or it's gone. It's and it's up the other end of the bus somewhere. Like he's, uh, he's good at that, and he's. Uh, he's is brilliant. He's such a, he's, he's like uh, he loves like uh, to mention a little comment. You know, you'll be talking away, and then he'll just throw something in, which sparks a debate, and then he just walk he just walks back like that and giggles to him, starts laughing. I always think like, oh, there we go. Date's throwing another grenade on the fire. He just chucks it in, and like he'll say something. The, the boys start arguing and say, no, it was you that said that. And all of a sudden, they're all kicking off over here. Date's just giggling away to himself. He's he's cheeky. He's brilliant. Date's and. You know, for such a you know, you, you speak to him and you think you speak to a sensible guy and he's he's nudging someone else, like he's he's taking the mick out of you, you know, he's you gotta be mindful, you've got to be careful with dates. He's he's brilliant like that. But um like I say, yeah, on, on the pitch he's brilliant, he's you know, he's becoming a set piece specialist really, isn't he? And uh, it's about time he scored because uh, you know, he, he hadn't scored up until Wrexham and we were, you know, wondering when's when's he gonna break his duck and then when he <laughs> when he scored like that, it's such a word. I thought, well, you know, if he doesn't score many, if he scores all like that, then you know, I'm not that bothered, you know. So, uh, and he's, uh, I think his performance at Tranmere away was was something special as well. Uh, he really, you know, he was in the zone that that game, and you know, he's he's had a few games where he's. I remember Dover away as well. It sums up the bloke. Dover away, one nil down, eighty seventh minutes on that. And he'd not long come on. I think the gaffer looked and we had Jenna on the bench and Dates and Dates was there oh, spewing yeah. in the dugout like vomiting and he was ill. He'd been ill all day and the manager was like, Dates, you ready? And he's like, all right, Jenna, you go on. And then within sort of two or three minutes, Jenna had copped a nasty knot, a big, big gash across his foot and had to come off. So, so then Dates had to go on and like I say, he'd been uh, sick in the dugout just before and comes on and wins a penalty and then a minute later sets up right his tapping and you think just change the game within three or four minutes and that's what he gives you days he's got that ability to to just take the game away from an opposition and uh, you know he's, he's he's been a brilliant addition to the another brilliant addition to the to the squad with his character wise he's you know he's a good age for us as well he is another he's passionate when when the game like I say he's a, he's a you know can, uh, his sense of humour is quite cheeky, and he can have a laugh. And but when it comes to football, he's so, you know, when he, when he gets his mind set to it, he, he really does uh, have that determination and drive. And uh, you know, he's a great addition to the squad. He's, he, you know, the the younger sort of players in his position can can look up to him because he is he's a, he's a role model, dates and. Uh, you know, his missus is uh, pregnant at the minute, as we know, so, you know, we wish them all the best with their pregnancy, and uh, he's been a really good addition to the squad, and we're really glad to have him, and, uh, yeah, uh, um, hopefully we can have him next season as well, because he'll be, you know, uh, I think the higher up the leagues go, the, the better he'll, he'll come into his own, and, uh, yeah, another really valued member to the squad. Excellent.